What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Will with Gutter Fighting Secrets. Today, we're going to be talking about surveillance detection. Obviously, on the weekends, we usually push out a hand-to-hand -hand combat video for you guys, but this is something that, in my personal opinion, it's more valuable and it's more important. There are really four categories of people that I think that will benefit from this information. Number one is... uh women and men dealing with stalkers. You don't have to be a woman to have to be worried about somebody stalking you. I've had to deal with it before with crazy ex-girlfriends, and uh, I know other men have as well. It's actually not that uncommon. However, obviously, women, this is something that you guys do have to deal with as well. Uh, it can be a little more scary, a little more threatening, when you're a female dealing with a crazy man who's stalking you, in my opinion, it could be a little more physically dangerous for you. So this is something that you can absolutely benefit from. However, uh, men, <laughs> let me tell you this. Women are the best private detectives I've ever seen in my life. And I was a private detective for some time. I have extensive training in this field. And I'm going to tell you this. Women are very, very, very good at this, just naturally. So knowing a little bit about how this is done will benefit you. The other category of people that will benefit from this information are professionals in business and industry. Now, obviously, somebody or some people, some organization looking to exploit you in some way, exploit you, exploit your business, exploit your company, um, exploit your agency. Obviously, this is something that you have to be aware of. And if you are in an industry, maybe the defense industry or something like that, where you have to be aware of this stuff, they, they should be giving you some type of training on this. Nonetheless, this is information that I'm going to be giving you guys today that is fairly unique. Traveling, world travelers. This is something that you guys really need to be aware of. Um, criminal and terrorist organizations do this, and they're actually fairly good at this. They they actually they depending on the caliber of organization, they can be quite seasoned at this. And the last category of people that can benefit from this is other, <laughs> and I'm not going to go into that. I'm just going to leave it at that. But yeah. I'll leave it at that. So again, why do we want to focus on this? You know, Will, like, dude, I'm not out there doing, you know, any type of like clandestine meetings or anything like that. I, I don't care about this. That's fine. If you're one of those people who feels that way, feel free to tune out anytime you want. But if you're somebody who is worried, or I should just say somebody who's interested in protecting your personal security and personal civil liberties, this is information that is absolutely relevant to you. What is my background? Why do I um, have the ability to talk about this stuff? What is what is the the purpose of you listening to a guy like me talk about this? Well, I'm going to leave it vague for you. However, I will tell you this. I have extensive training on this. I've trained in numerous countries on this from numerous um, very competent, capable schools. Okay, I've, I've spent a long time doing this foot surveillance, mobile surveillance, surveillance detection. You guys know I worked in, um, I should say, closed protection for a little while. I've also been a private investigator, and I've run a lot of surveillance operations uh, on numerous different types of people. As well as all of that, I am a very seasoned world traveler. This picture that I took was in Nepal. I've been to many developing countries. And I've had some personal experience um, spotting this stuff and having to be aware, keenly aware, if um, if CD characters potentially are are looking at me and wanting to hurt me as an American traveling in developing nations overseas. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about one little introduction, introductional part of detecting surveillance. And if I get a good response to this, if people seem like they're interested in it, if you guys ask me to do more, I will. If not, we'll leave it at this. 
But the first thing that you need to be aware of is what we call pattern of life. Pattern of life. And when we talk about this further in other videos, if we do them, I'm going to keep coming back to pattern of life. It's that important. And that's why we're going to focus on this first. What does it mean, pattern of life? Well, we all have a pattern of life. Human beings are creatures of routine. Every one of us. We all get into a routine. I'm sure if you think about it, your week to week looks pretty similar every week, right? Maybe you go to work and you leave at a certain time. You go to lunch at a certain time. You come back at a certain time. You more than likely have like a coffee shop, a Starbucks or something that you usually frequent. You usually go shopping in the same place for groceries. You'll usually go to lunch in the same few places. You, you, unless you're like fucking wealthy, you usually drive the same vehicle. And this makes it very easy for somebody to start getting a pattern of life on us. Why is it dangerous potentially <clears throat> for somebody to be able to get a pattern of life on us? Well, if somebody wants to watch us and start gathering information on us, they're going to need to know our pattern of life in order to make it easier for them to follow us without being detected. If I know that every morning you wake up at seven o'clock, you leave for work between eight o'clock and 8.30, you're gonna take this specific route to work and you're gonna be at your place of business, place of work from say nine o'clock until five o'clock. That makes it extremely easy for me to plan how I'm going to watch you and surveil you without being detected. If I know that you have three or four different places that you will go for lunch, it makes it very easy for me to lay back and watch you. I know that if you leave for work every morning between 8 and 8.30, all I have to do is pull up on your house or your apartment or wherever you live and pick a good location for me to observe, park in a manner that is non-attention assuming, use a vehicle that I know that you don't know who I am, and I have to just wait. And I have a very tight schedule of when I have to be there. I don't need to get up at four o'clock in the morning and go and like, try to figure out when you're going to leave. That could take a long time. It could take, sometimes I've been on operations where we don't know when they leave, when, if they're going to leave. So we literally wake up at like three o'clock in the morning and get there by like four, four thirty, And we just hang out in our car outside of the person's house. Maybe they come out, maybe they don't. I've spent literally, I've spent days just in the back of a fucking car with a camera, like watching somebody's front door and just seeing if and when they're going to come out. Once we figure out, okay, they came out today at 8.15, we make a note of that. Maybe we'll fuck off for some time. We'll come back a week later. All right, we're going to try to see if they come out around the same time. So once we figure out roughly when you come out, it makes our job as a surveillance team or somebody doing surveillance much easier. But once we figure out that pattern that you come out every morning or at least five days a week at, again, let's just say eight to 8.30, all we have to do is show up around that time and know that we can follow you wherever you're going. Once we figure out where you're going and we know that Five days a week, you are here. Again, it makes our job so much easier because all we have to do is hang out outside of your place of business. Again, parked in a discreet way, in a discreet vehicle. Maybe we use the same one. Maybe we don't. Maybe we use other people, right? And just watch. 
All we have to do is watch. We don't care. We don't care what's going on inside your place of business necessarily. We're not trying to get inside your place of business. We're trying to follow you and figure out what your pattern of life is. And once we know all this information, it makes it really easy for us to exploit you. Now, perhaps we want to kidnap you. Perhaps we just want to gather information about you. Who are you meeting with, right? Who are you going to lunch with? Once you get off work, where are you going after that? Once we figure all this stuff out, it makes it really, really easy for us to put together a plan of, okay, well, if we did want to hurt this guy, where are we going to do it so that it doesn't cause any attention to us, call any attention to us, and that we can get away quickly? Where is the best place? Where is the choke points that we can set up on this guy, that we can get him, boom, take him, and be out? And get away ourselves because after all like that's the most important thing right we want to be able to do this in a way where we can get you hurt you hit you and leave without getting into any trouble or even being seen ourselves so now that we've established the pattern of life and why it's important to be aware of your own pattern of life we can start discussing ways to mitigate this now <clears throat> obviously if you are concerned about somebody potentially surveilling you, if you do have reason to believe that this is a threat, a credible threat to you, you would want to vary your pattern of life. Now, yes, if it's you have to be at work every day at this time, like it's going to be difficult to vary your routine, right? Like you can't really do much about I have to be here at this time. And I have, you know, I go home at this time, like it, at least for getting to your work, right? Like you usually have to be at work. There's no negotiating this at the same freaking time every day. So that's difficult, right? But there are, there are things we can do to mitigate this. And, you know, look, maybe you're not going to like, maybe you're not going to change up your routine just because, right? In, unless you have a credible reason to believe that somebody or some organization might be surveilling you with the intent to hurt or exploit you, there really isn't any reason to, to shake up your routine like this. Again, I said human beings are creatures of routine. We all have our routine. So there's there's no reason to, to be concerned about this unless you believe that there is a credible threat. Now, the only way that you're going to know there's a credible threat is, A, you have done something or you know like again in the case of stalking like you broke up with this girl she's kind of crazy da, da, da. Uh, maybe for the next you know month or two i'll vary my routine and just you know try to try to see if anybody's looking at me right uh, maybe you have you know a reason to believe that way the point is that perhaps for some unspecified period of time you decide that it would be advantageous to you to be unpredictable being unpredictable can be very frustrating to somebody who's trying to follow you or surveil you, especially when they've already put together a pattern of life on you. Once somebody has established that this and this and this and this location is where you're most likely going to be, if all of a sudden that changes and that's just wildly varies and instead of being here at seven o'clock you, you know in at night you go for a i don't know walk in the park or this bar instead of doing that you, you don't do it at all or you go somewhere completely different that can be very very frustrating for somebody like trying to watch you believe me it, it can be very frustrating now this isn't like the overall solution. There's a lot that goes into trying to figure out, you know, who it is that's following you and why maybe they are and picking up on it in the first place. Because if somebody is good, if somebody or some organization is good at doing this, that you won't, you more than likely won't, won't know it at all. But, you know, if in fact you do have the concern, then varying your roots and times is absolutely, um, absolutely helpful if for no other reason then they've already made a plan and decided like well we're going to you know 
just wait until he goes to his favorite bar at seven o'clock every evening. We're not going to have to bother following him so that we don't, we're, we're not concerned about him. Like looking behind and saying, is somebody following me? Like, oh. we're just going to show up and park down the street or hang out and put somebody in that bar at a table or, you know, even better, like a couple, we're going to send a couple in there and just, they're just going to watch and see who he meets at that bar. If somebody, you know, if a mistress comes in or whatever, we're going to make notes of that, da, 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 right? More than likely, that's that's what they're going to do. Once they have a solid pattern of life on you, they don't anymore need to follow you from point A to B to C to D. They're simply going to sporadically show up at these different locations that they already know you're going to be at and watch you from there. So if... <laughs> If all of a sudden you stop showing up at those places and you choose another place to go to, like instead of you going to O'Malley's bar every night at seven o'clock or every other night at seven o'clock, maybe you decide to go to Fred's sports bar instead and you just usually don't go there. Like that's going to be frustrating for them. And they're going to start getting frustrated. And perhaps if they're really not that motivated to do so, they're, they're going to stop surveilling you altogether. Now, again, this is like one small, very small, very freaking small part of this. It's not your overall like best solution. Again, if, if it's one small, small part of this, but when you have cause to be concerned, shaking up and varying your routine can be a useful tool in your toolbox. Now, again, we mentioned about you can't do anything about having to leave for work at the same time, but you can do something about the routes that you take to work. Now, yeah, I mean, whatever, like, is it going to help that that much? Yes and no, but it's better than doing nothing, right? So instead of having one way that you get to work every single day and being so predictable, maybe you choose three or four or five different routes that you can take to work. If for nothing else, this will help like your cognition and switch up your brain and the way that you think, it's actually very healthy for you to do this. But taking a couple different ways to get to work and just varying them up from time to time is super, like it's super useful in this way. So that way, maybe like, let's just say this, maybe this terrorist organization, they know that you're going to leave your house every morning at eight o'clock and you're going to take this route to work. So what are they going to do? They're going to set up at the advantageous place along this route to hit you and get away, right? Well, what happens when you just never show up? Their plan's already been foiled. They're like, what the he never showed up. It makes them very upset, right? Not to mention the fact that if they never really know which one of these three to five routes that you're going to take, how are they going to plan exactly where they're going to hit you? It makes it really tough for them to put together a solid plan to know 100%. Like if we dedicate all our resources over here, but he goes any one of these routes, like they're, they're not going to dedicate all their resources here, right? It makes them difficult to come up with a 100% like solid, credible plan for themselves to get you. Instead, they're going to be on their toes and they're not going to know which route you're taking. So they don't have a solid plan of attack. Varying your roots can be a, a good way to shake this up as well. Now, again, this is just fucking one very small little piece of it, but it can be, again, a useful tool in our toolbox. So varying your roots, and if you can, varying your times, just to break up that pattern of life a little bit. And again, it doesn't have to be a huge, like, like a huge pattern disrupt, I'm going to call it, but making those little pattern disrupts and making them so sporadic that nobody knows when they're going to happen can, can be a deterrent in itself for people trying to get a beat on you, a read on you. And for people trying to figure out like where you're going to be, when you're going to be there. And this will play in if we talk about this more. This is very important part of doing surveillance detection, but I'm going to leave it at that for now. So let me recap real quick is everybody has a pattern of life. In order to put you under surveillance, we want to figure out what your pattern of life is. 
where you're going to be, when you're going to be there, and how you're going to get there. If you shake up those three things, where you're going to be, when you're going to be there, and how you're going to be there, how you're going to get there, then that in itself is one small piece of the puzzle in defeating or at least <laughs> aggravating uh, this potentially hostile surveillance. Um, again, to use the analogy of a stalker, because I, I feel that that's probably the most likely scenario here is either a stalker or something like that, a criminal, right? Like surveilling you to find out, maybe even a criminal wants to surveil you to find out, hey, just like, when do you go to work so I can rob the fuck out of your house or like get some important shit from inside your house, right? Or target your wife, target your children, right? Something like that. Um, that, that example, I think is the most realistic one. If you shake them up enough to make them to deter them to want to like surveil you if you if you just make them fucking frustrated sometimes it's perhaps they will give up and not do it at all and that's i think the point that i was trying to make there so varying your roots and times is a very good way to start start thinking about this if this was helpful to you if you enjoyed this let me know Put a comment down below. Certainly give us a thumbs up to drive us up in that algorithm. But if you want to know more about this stuff, and I can go very in-depth with this, I am happy to do so in a way that will be relevant to, to the masses, relevant to your situation as well. If you have a situation that you'd like to get in touch with me about, I will be glad to talk with you further about this. I'm not going to like consult for free. I will do that for a price. I can consult you or I can absolutely um, connect you with other individuals that can be helpful for this. But if you have something that you want me to make a video on, I'm happy to do so. And again, if you guys, if I get enough comments and if I get enough good feedback about this, we can start talking about this further and in more detail and we can build upon what we've talked about today. Guys, until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. Keep a sharp eye out there. Be careful. Times are dangerous right now. We're living in a crazy world. We always have, but it's it's gotten weirder, <laughs> certainly, just to say the least. I will see you in the next video, and thank you for watching. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you for your attention. Later, motherfuckers.